welcome to Eva to Studio. My name is Elizabeth and this is just an update of some of the things that I've made recently and some of the things that I'm working on. So I hope you find it interesting. If you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment and I'm happy to answer the questions. So first of all, what are some things that I finished? So I have been pretty busy lately and I do have some finishes. Now this project, um, this is a quilt and it's made with a new fabric collection from Island Boutique. I was lucky enough to get pre-release of the fabric so I could make something with it. And so the fabric is called Romance Garden. And so I use this fabric to make up uh, one of my older patterns called No Flies in My Garden. So I call this quilt No Flies in My Romance Garden because I was blending those together and I can't hold up the whole thing because this is quite a large quilt. But you can check this other video if you wanna see this whole thing. But I'm really happy with how it turned out. Um, I really like the green chain and then the purple and blue um, shoe fly blocks. It looks great on this white background. And I quilted this with straight line quilting. So I have vertical and horizontal lines and diagonal lines. So even though the quilting isn't difficult, it's just straight lines, it does really work with this um, piecing. And I really like how that turned out. So that is one finish that I have. Uh, the other finish, it's actually before then, the other finish that I have is this quilt. And this is all my blocks that I used last year in the block of the month and I put them together into a finished quilt. So these blocks are also made with batik fabric. It's this cream background and they're made with blue and green and they're all hand embellished with embroidery with all flowers and vines and leaves. And so this one turned out really good. Um, now, if you're paying attention, you might be wondering how come it's a block of the month and there's only nine blocks in it. And the reason is because I didn't start the block of the month until April. So I didn't have blocks for January, February, March. However, if you enjoy this type of project, I'm doing another block of the month in 2024 and I am planning on having 12 blocks. I did start it in January. And these blocks are also pieced blocks embellished with embroidery, but they're not as much flowers and vines. It's more um, just geometric designs. So you can check if you wanna see, get those blocks. The patterns for the blocks are available for free during that month. So you can just go to my website and get them. But then if you miss any after that, they are for sale um, in my shop. So check that out if you like block of the month. And I really like how um, this, how this quilt turned out. Now, if you see on the back, you can see my quilting and I did something that I don't usually do on quilts. I did stitch in the ditch quilting. And if you've heard me talk about quilting, you know, I don't do it a lot and I really don't recommend it to beginners um, just because it seems like it should be easy and it's not easy. But I did stitch in the ditch quilting on this one because I wanted to um, emphasize the embroidery and the piecing and I didn't want the quilting to overpower that. So the quilting um, did turn out okay. Uh, I was reminded why I don't do stitch in the ditch a lot because a lot of times it's kind of stitching close to the ditch and around the ditch, but I love how that quilt looks. And I have a quilt top that I finished. And this is another version of No Place in My Garden. And this is the smaller version. And so it's small, it would be like a, a throw size or a baby size. And this one is again in batiks. This is with some batiks that I received when I was an Island Batiki ambassador, but I didn't use them during those years. So I'm using them now. And this quilt, I'm, it's okay. I'm a little bit disappointed with how it turned out because I decided to go scrappy. So I used this blue background that I like, but I just use a bunch of scrappy green fabrics. And I just feel that 
you can't really see the pattern because all the pieces are green. I think it would have looked a lot better if I had used two fabrics, one or two colors, one color for the chain blocks and another color for the shoe fly blocks. I feel like this, you can't see the overall pattern. It just kind of looks like green splatted onto the blue background. So um, I'm gonna be finishing this up and it's gonna be a baby quilt. And so it's gonna be totally fine for that purpose, especially if it's gonna be like thrown on the floor for the baby. But if I was doing this again, I would try and be more um, conscious of color to either have two different colors or sort by light and dark or something like that. So this was a good um, learning experience. So um, when this one is all quilted, then I'll be sure to update you on that. I'm planning on quilting this with just a big spiral design. That's a great way to finish um, little quilts like this. And that's, that's what I'm planning on doing and it should be really fun. So besides those two versions of No Flies in My Garden, I'm also working on a scrappy one. And for this one, it's scrappy, but it is what I call color controlled scrappy. So for the background, I'm using all different um, light neutral backgrounds. And then on the chain blocks, I'm doing those with green fabric. So all different shades of green. And then the shoe flies I'm doing in red. And so it's looking great as it's going together. I have all the blocks finished, so I just have to join them together. And it's like a really kind of traditionally Christmassy. So it's gonna be really pretty. Um, I'm liking how it goes together. And I've used a lot of scraps and I still have a big bin of scraps. It doesn't seem like it's going down a lot because that's how it goes, but I'll keep plugging away at that. So also in progress, if you follow me on social media, you've probably seen, I've been working on a new Hardinger design. And this is what it's looking like so far. Um, I'm in the middle, so it does have threads and stuff sticking out in it. But it's this little square and square design. And I've used two different colors of thread, one for um, the squares and then another one for the diamond. And this is with the um, variegated thread, which I love working with variegated thread. And I love working with color in my Hardinger pieces, which I know is not traditional. Some people, um, prefer to not use color and that's fine. It's great that there's room for everybody. Um, so I'm liking how it's going together so far. I'm still trying to make a decision about the corners, how I'm going to do the corners or if I'm going to do anything in the corners. So if you want to see details, you can follow me on social media to see um, every little step along the way and my decision making process. But it's nice to have a hand stitching project. It's kind of relaxing to do and while you're doing something else. Something else I'm thinking of and I'm just um, playing around with the idea right now is you might remember last fall I made this little baby dress with reversible patchwork and it's really adorable. It's so cute and the reversible patchwork means it's reversible seams. So it's not lined, but there's not a lot of um, raw edges to irritate delicate skin. And this was so cute. So I began, so I've been thinking of more ways that I could use this technique for clothing. And especially with Quilt Canada coming up, I'm thinking that I should make a skirt because a skirt is a good shape. Um, it doesn't have a lot to be fitted. It's kind of a rectangle um, with a little bit of fitting at the waist. So I'm thinking the skirt's a good project. Um, so I'm thinking of fabric I can use for that. So uh, I'll be sharing all the details on social media. And then next month, of course, you'll hear an update to see what I've decided to do with that. But, um, but if it turns out the way I'm imagining, I think it'll be really good, but things don't always turn out the way that you imagine. So you have to wait and see on that. So as well as all those things that I'm working on, I really, really want to finish up some of my UFOs and kind of 
clear my mind and clear my list of things that I have to do. So I have this bin and it has a lot of projects that I started on or they're in, they're somewhere in the process. A lot of them are tops that are finished. So this year I'm making a big effort to just finish those so I can be done with them. So the first one, these are blocks that are done and they're large blocks and these were done as leader and ender projects. So I just had these squares cut out and I used them in between piecing other things to start my thread and end my thread. And I was able to get these blocks done that way. So I really have never sat down and spent time working on this as a quilt. But these uh, reproduction prints on the white background, I think it's gonna be really fun. I'm gonna add just the sashing in between them. I think I have nine blocks, I think. I'll see how many there are. So that'll be a fun little quilt. And it was just kind of a, a bonus quilt. It was done in between other quilts. So um, this, I need to just assemble this into a quilt top and then get that quilted. Um, this next one, this is a quilt top that is finished. And this was another scrappy one. So this one, I just have strips of scraps and I put them together with white strips in between. And so this was another attempt to use up some of the scraps. And this one, I'm debating whether or not to make it a little bit bigger because this quilt, my youngest daughter actually loves and she actually wants to have. And I'll tell you, most of the time, my kids are not interested in quilts and they don't really ask for them. But this one, she wants to have. And this is a nice throw size, but I'm debating whether or not I should make it bigger so that it would fit on her bed or just finish it and be done with it. Um, so I'm playing around with that. We'll see how many um, purple scraps I still have, because I still have some, but this did make quite a big dent. So I'm playing around with what I should do with this and I'll probably just finish it as is, but we'll see. So this quilt is a sample that I did for my pattern, not in Ohio anymore. And it's named that because it has Ohio star, but it's not in a traditional Ohio star layout. And this quilt, I did just use fabric that I had. Um, I'm not even sure where it came from. It's fabric I inherited from somewhere. And this quilt actually, as a sample quilt for a new pattern, it breaks all the rules because it uses um, old fabric that wouldn't be um, easily found. It uses big prints and not really popular colors. But I thought I would do this just as a sample um, to show something really different you can do because this fabric, when you see it, it doesn't usually scream background fabric to you, but I use this as a background and then I use green and purple for the cascade of Ohio stars. Um, so it is kind of interesting to see. Uh, it is, the top is finished. It even has batting on it. Um, it doesn't have a backing. So I just need to get it backing on and finish it in some quick and simple way. I'm not even sure what I'm gonna do with this. Um, I will probably donate it somewhere, but this one is another one that I just have to sit down and finish it. It shouldn't take very long. I'm debating on how, what quilting design to do with this one. So I will probably go with straight wavy lines. That is one of my favorite ways to finish because it is quick to do, it's easy to do, and it looks good with a lot of different quilt designs. So I will probably do that. So this one, I'm not sure where it should be on the priority, but it should probably be pretty high up on my list just because it won't take very long to do. And so it'll be something that I can um, knock out quickly and then cross that off my list. And then it will make, feel like I'm being really productive as I'm crossing easy things off my list. Uh, this piece, this is an old, old UFO. It's something I started a long time ago. 
And if you've been in the quilting world a long time, you might remember back in the day, Stack and Whack was a big thing. There was a book by, by Bethany Reynolds. Um, and then it went on and became One Block Wonder and there's lots of other names for it. But that was the first time that I saw this effect. And so I started this quilt and this quilt, I still love the design. This technique is really fun if you've never done it uh, because it's fun to see the effects that come up from the fabric. And so this one, of course, I couldn't do just a plain regular one. I had to do something with a secondary design. So you can see in my blocks, I have these corners are different colors and that gives a secondary uh, pinwheel design. So this quilt, um, I really like it how it looks but to be totally honest this fabric that this flower fabric is actually really cheap low quality fabric um, it was what I could afford at the time because you need a lot of fabric to do this effect um, so it's what I could afford and I like the colors and I still like how it looks I'm just a little um, nervous about how it's gonna hold up, but I just need to um, quilt this and uh, get it done. And then if it wears out, then it wears out. It is what it is. I'm also debating how to actually quilt this because I don't wanna take away from this effect and also the pinwheel effect. So I'm not sure if I should do um, stitch in the ditch or something else. I don't really know. So I'm still thinking about this. So if you have any suggestions for what would be a good quilt design for this, let me know. I think, I think what might be nice is if everything was like custom free motion quilted to emphasize the design. However, because of the fabric in this quilt, I am not going to put that much effort into the quilting. Um, so I want something that is going to be quick and easy to do. Um, and I will save my uh, time consuming free motion quilting for um, a quilt that's a little bit better quality. So this one, it'll be, uh, it's fun to see how it looks when I, now that I finally got the quilt top done and laid out, I just have to again, sit down and get it quilted. And I have another quilt top that is finished. It needs to be quilted. So you can tell in the whole uh, steps of doing a quilt, the step that I dislike the most is basting, putting together quilts with the backing and the batting. And so that is like a lot of people, it's where I tend to get hung up. I enjoy uh, making the tops. And then once I get started on the quilting, then I enjoy that as well. It's just getting from one step to the next. And so this quilt, this was a mystery quilt done by the Canadian Quilters Association back in, 2018 or 2019 something like that um, and I got most of that top done as the mystery quilt was released every month most of it was done the blocks were done I had all the pieces done I just hadn't put the border onto the middle of the quilt and so um, last month I finally sat down got the border onto it now it just needs to be quilted so it's in my to be quilted pile so I will probably quilt this um, with diagonal lines, either straight or wavy diagonal lines. I haven't decided, but um, it's another quilt top that needs to be done. And here's another one. This one is even basted. It's all, it's put together. It's a top and this is a little, um, throw size or a baby size. And this is just a, a simple little rail fence in the shades of purple. And then it has actually three borders on it, which is rare for me to put three borders on a quilt. But it's really cute. 
um, I again I just need to um, quilt it I'm trying to decide on the quilting design I think I'm gonna go with something wavy just to be add some contrast to all the straight lines on here so I'm not sure how much curve lines I'm gonna do if I'll just do um, wavy lines horizontal and vertical I might do that I'll I'll take another look through my um, book of simple quilting that has 10 designs and I'll take a look and see if I get inspired by some of the ideas on the sample diagrams that are in there but um, if you have any suggestions then let me know but I think I'm going to go with weighty lines so this is another one that should go up in my priority list because it does it needs to be pressed again because it's been sitting around but it is um together with a backing this is a really nice flannel backing so i think that would make a great uh baby quilt and actually now that i see it i remember why it's been there it's because this backing is just a tiny bit smaller than the top um, it's like a couple inches short and so this backing i don't think it's going to work. That's why it got put into this bin because I need another backing or I need to add something onto this backing. So uh, yeah, I'll have to look through my purple and see what I have. I'm really disappointed that this backing won't work because it's so nice um, and it's, it's really soft flannel. Um, so I can either add something to the backing to make the backing a little bit bigger, or I could trim the border down to make the whole quilt a little bit smaller so that it can fit with this backing fabric. So I will think about that, but this one also should uh, move pretty high on my list um, because it won't take a long to finish it once I decide what I'm going to do. And then I just have two more quilt tops. And these are tops. I was playing around with a pattern that I was thinking of publishing and I've decided not to. Um, but it uses just a corner block and it has these, um, it's a corner block in rows. And so we can see this is the block on point and it has this little light pink heart and then this dark pink um, kind of lightning bolt that goes along. So here's one with bigger blocks in pink and then here's another one. The blocks are a little bit smaller and it's in blue. Um, so this is a... Uh, so here on this one you can see a little bit better because... Um, the darker color is the heart color and the lighter color is like the zigzag color and so this is a cute um cute little quilt so i'll share pictures of that but i don't think i'm going to bother writing up the whole pattern for that unless there's a big demand when i share the pictures but yeah these two quilts um again i will probably donate them somewhere i don't have a plan for what i'm going to do for those um more tops that need to be quilted. So how many do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven tops that are complete. And then these blocks that won't take very much to get them into tops. So say eight. And so if I can finish one month then I should be able to finish these before the end of the year. So that's my goal to finish all these quilt tops before the end of the year. And this is most of my uh, quilting UFOs that I have. Um, yeah, I have a lot of projects on my uh, wish list or things that I would like to do, but I've managed to stop myself from starting them. So that's my goal is to finish these before I get started on a lot of my other projects, things that I want to make. 
So if you have any questions about any of these projects or suggestions for how I should finish them, then I would love to hear from you. Um, stay tuned because I will give you another update next month to see if I managed to finish anything from here or if they all just went back in the box and I haven't looked at it again. But until then, happy sewing. See you next time.